Um, so yesterday I said, to raise funds for your business, make sure you go to your FFF, friend, family, uh, somebody say, call other one the fools. There's always somebody with money and they don't know what to do with that money. So if you have a great idea, they always make the money available to you. Um, now, these people, they'll be looking for certain things. And I talked about a few yesterday. And when you go to and you want somebody to invest in your business, you must make sure you have a skin in the game. You must commit to your idea also. Don't ask somebody to invest into the business that you are not ready to invest in. Uh, we talk about angel investor. investor. You know, when you deal with angel investor, uh, make sure most angel investor, they will invest maybe because they just love you, because it meet the need, uh, because, you know, there's something in there that can help them within their own network. Uh, we talk about venture capitalism. Venture capitalism most of the time are people that have money or other people money and they are helping managers or those money. So those are people you can go to it. Uh, yesterday, I didn't talk about, I talked about crowdfunding also. Um, if you have a product and you don't have money to produce, to do a massive production, you can use a crowdfunding thing. Just say kickstarted.com, gofundme.com. And, you know, India go, uh, India, gogo.com or uh, you have site like that you can set up an account and you know let's say that clothes that is on uh, samuel ocean if you know where you can find clothes like that you can go and have a account and put that clothes for sale sell it before you go and buy the clothes and ship it that's the power of it so if you have a product and you need money to do a massive production, you can actually sell it before you produce. Um, now, I didn't talk about bank yesterday because I didn't want to distract you. Bank is place you can go and get money from as well. But one of the things, bank, you have to understand that bank don't have money. This bank don't have money. Bank will go and take money for the, from the Federal Reserve or from you. So bank on his own, they don't have money. They manage other people's money. So because of that, they actually measure, measure the risk. They are risk averse. They don't want to lose people money. They don't want to lose the Federal Reserve money. So because of that, they want to make sure if you have a project, they want to make sure you have a skin in the game. You have something that can fall back on it if you don't pay the money back. So if you have your house, you can use as collateral. You can use your building. You can use some of the access that you have to get money from bank. When you walk to the bank, they want to make sure you have uh, something that can fall back on if you don't pay them or pay them on time. Okay. So today, I, I want to focus mainly on how to how do you approach an angel and how do you approach your family member? I dealt with that yesterday. Um, how do you approach an a angel investor? And how do you, if you need to go out, out there and gather the money, what do you do and, and how do you really do that? Now, the first thing you have to do before, before you go before these people are actually to prepare a business plan. And you have to pitch them on your business. The truth is that most investors, um, now, when you talk about investor, invest, investing is like a dating. Who, who ever been to a date in his life? Even just once, even in the past, not now, like back in the day, back, back in the day. <laughs> the goal of dating is, is not to have the person, but is to have another date. You know that, right? So you not date somebody, to matter the person right there. If you meet somebody and ask the person for a date and the person say, well, I want you to marry me now, you run away. You want to get to know the person. You want to make sure the person is the right fit. 
That's the same way when you approach a family member for investment or angel investor or any venture capital that you want to approach to get funds from them. So you have to make sure you use uh, uh, you use this this approach. So there's few things uh, that you must do before you approach them. First of all, you have to do a research on the person. I talked about this yesterday. Do a research. If you want to, I mean, I, I even have somebody who came to me and he wanted me to invest in his company. And guess what? He's, he's actually, he's not a coach, but he, he's, the model of his business is exactly like my own business. Why would I develop my, my competitor? So if this person did a research in good enough for me, he was going to know that this is exactly what this guy is doing. So no investor who invests in two different companies that are doing the same thing. No. It's going to be as if you are fighting within yourself. So if you know somebody, let's say you want um, the, let's say you want to open a small bank. And then you go to another banker or maybe one person that invests so much money in, a, in one bank, you ask them to come and invest money in your own bank. That's the wrong person. They're not going to invest in it. You just didn't do the, your, your, your research. You don't know them. You didn't do enough research on them. So it's so important to do the research and get to know the person and know exactly how he died his money. The second thing is know what industry he's, he has, he's knowledgeable about. If you are going to ask Coach Madiado, please invest 200,000 euro in my old well. She'll be like, what? Oh, what? Like, okay, I don't know anything about oil. <laughs> Not that it's a bad business, but most investors want to know what they are putting their money in. They want to have an idea. But maybe if you tell her, I'm setting up an institute in Africa to train kids, she's passionate about that. She'll be like, whoa, I want to be part of it. So make sure you do enough homework on the person that you want to approach and see some of the interests before you pitch uh, them about coming and investing to your business. Now, some of the people always say, some of the people always say, well, ask the question and say, if I'm going to an investor, should I tell the investor what I already have? I talk about the skin, skin in the game. If you need money and you just come and tell somebody, hey, Coach Angela, I want you to invest $100,000 in my startup. Would I say that, okay, I have $10,000 already? She's not going to be motivated. What do you have? Make sure you present that. Okay, I want you to, I need $100,000. I already have $20,000. I already have $10,000. I have $5,000. That shows that, hey, you are doing something. You do something. I have a lot of people, you know, they show me things they want to do. And they want me to pay their transportation to go in another city to register that product. I'm like, are you serious? That means you don't believe in what you are doing. You have no skin in a game. Make sure you show that you have a skin in a game. Now, when you start a process, you must uh, uh, um, answer some of the questions before you move forward. And these are a few questions you must answer from the investor. What are my source of, what are the, some of the source of income, uh, source of funding? When you know the investor, when you do enough research on the investor, you know where, what's the source of funding. What does the investor actually do? How, how they make their money? It's gonna determine sometimes, you know, how and their funding. Some investors, are, like I say, I use other people's money. And some people, when they give the money to invest, they put a restriction on it. You cannot invest on nightclub. You cannot invest on making whiskey. You cannot invest on, you know, there's 
few things that can put restriction on it. You cannot invest in the manufacture of guns. You cannot make bombs with my money. So some people are like that. They will put some restriction. So you, you, you want to know that. You must ask questions like, why will this investor be interested in my business? You have to answer that question. So why? Why? Why, why would they be interested in your business? That particular investor, we are talking about the avatar of the investor. Why should they be interested? That if you are talking to, 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 to OSHA to invest in my business, he may have a different interest. But if you are going to Grace, go to Grace, the interest may shift. Now, if you move down to Andrew, that could be a different interest. But you must know. You must know. So, and this is going to be part of your research. How fast would I need to go to market? The investor, the investor need to know, okay, is it a dream? Is it something you are thinking about for like maybe 10 years from now? Or is something like down the road, six months or a year? How quick do you need that? Is this something that is still on the early, early, early de development? So you, you have to be able to answer that. Before I approach any investor, you must answer those questions. What problem am I, this question, what problem am I solving? What problem? I know people want to get, they need money from investor, but they haven't established the problem that they are solving. What problem are you solving? It's so important. Who has that problem? It's not just about ask for money. When you don't have this answer, when you are not clear with all this little thing, most people are not going to be interested in what you are talking about. Remember, an average investor talk to at least maybe thousand plus people per year. And out of that thousand plus, they may sit down and talk. I mean, they get an email from thousand. They may sit down and talk to maybe a hundred and then really go deep with 20 and then invest in two or three people only. Remember I shared with you yesterday, people who have money, they spend more time learning how to keep their money, not just make more money. So they really have a great strategy not to lose their money, not to waste their money. So you never see a great, a good investor who don't know how to keep their money. So they'll do a great homework and you must do a great homework too. So you must do a market research on your product. Know your competitor. I talked about yesterday. Don't say, what is the risk on this? Oh, there's no risk. Who are my competitor? There's no competitor. Investor will know that you don't know what you are talking about or you didn't do enough research. You must know your competitor. How many users customer do they have it's going to help you for the side of the market you know what is the side of the market how many people are adding consume that already how many could you convert if you have a better product do we is still some more customer stand behind that you can actually get why i am different you have to be able to pitch your investor with that why am i different and, and, and this has to be something in your head. It must be with you. So if you, like I said, Osho want to talk to me, he want me to, let's say he want to talk to me, he want me to invest in the outfit that he carry now. He have to be able to pitch me through this line. In five minutes. In five minutes. And this at the point you must follow. Very, very, very important. And you must answer these six questions before you approach any investor. What is the unmet need that I am answering? What is the unmet, unmet need that I am, I am answering? What are the needs out there that people are not meeting that I'm actually come in with my product to answer that? For those who are in a school of coaching, we deal with this for 
I mean, score of 365, we deal with this. What need are you meeting? What problem are you solving? That's what I'm talking about. Before anybody hand the money over to you, write you a check for 200 million to invest in your company. This is exactly what they are looking for. It is big enough. It is a big enough need. You have to answer that. Remember, I shared a story with you guys. If I come and tell you, for example, hey guys, there's almost 4 million people in, um, in Cameroon. No, let's use Nigeria. There's almost 220 million people in Nigeria. Hey guys, let's put money together and buy air, so many helicopters and go out down there, rent helicopter and rent private jet to people. I mean, if you 1% of Nigeria can rent a private jet and we rent one private jet, normally it goes for like five to 10 hours per uh, uh, $10, $1,000 per hour. Hey, if we have 10 jet down there, we'll be make $10,000 per hour. That means per day, if we run 10 hours, we do 10, uh, uh, we'll be doing what? Like a million per day per jet. 10 jet, that's 10 million a day. Let's go buy, man. We, with 50 million, we can have all our jet. Let's get a used one. And we get down there in one week, I mean, in two months, we make all our money and double. That sounds like a great business, right? But you'll be like, is it really 1% of Nigeria that can use a private jet? No. No, it's less than 1%. Matter of fact, people who can use a private jet in Nigeria, they already own one. <laughs> they already own one. They know where to go buy from. So it sounds like a great business, but there's no market for it. But I can pitch you this way. You'll be like, man, you're right. You're right. Let's go it. And then you gather your money and spend and bring the jet. After you go through everything, nobody ever ran the jet because there was no market for it. It is big enough for the need. Yes, there's a need. If you do that, one person will be running one jet every six months. But the need is not big enough. It's not big enough. Were you, um, were you able to maintain a differentiated position? Why and how? Whatever need you want to make, could you maintain and go longer? Why and how? You have to justify it. This will help you convince even yourself about what you're trying to do before you grab trying to get somebody money. What is my business model? How do I make money? How do you make money? What's your business model? The investor, you must answer this question to yourself before you approach the investor. Why us? Why is my team better than everyone um, that everyone else, why us, why you? Why people are gonna come with your company? What makes you better than any other person? This, this is a question people will ask you straight for before they hand the money over to you. Why is now the right time? Why is now the right time? COVID-19 actually boosts so many business. Since so many people went out of business, this is the right time for so many people to jump in and get into business. I was actually doing a video for the truck and today I will share that if you're in the United States or somewhere, get in a trucking business because, because of COVID, I mean, everything went on the wheel. The market was, the shortage was like 70%, now it's like 90%. Imagine a country like America, there's only 10% to supply for a trucking. 90% market open. You buy one truck, you can make $40,000 or $10,000 a week, $40,000 a month. You make the money you invest in a business in one month, literally. If you crazy like me, you make in 10 days. Way more demand than ever in, in the history of the world. That could be a good, good, good reason. So 
is it's very very important and most investor want to know also who is part of your team what is your experience have you done it before if you didn't do, do that before what are some of your track record so it's so important to explain to the investor what you did in the past and some of the thing you did even if it's not related to that particular uh, 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 particular uh, venture maybe some of your educational background you know that that can help so you want to make sure you add that uh, to the investor any question before we go to part two Any question? I think we're good to go. Okay, beautiful. So I have a questionnaire in the in the second few page. So download and log on and download all that. It's gonna help you step by step to develop to answer all these questions. So you write down the answer. And if you do that, you'll be able to pitch anybody with your business. So make multiple copies. If you have multiple business, uh, you can go over uh, one page after another one. So answer that. So before you approach the um, before you approach the investor, like I say, you do your research, do the homework, and prepare all the necessary documents they needed uh, before you approach them. Now, I want to share some of the site that you can use it um, to do different application. Yesterday, I talked about grant and I talked about some of the money available out there uh, to uh, business, business people. So let me see if I can share my screen with you. Okay, this is actually uh, the US government website. Um, there's a fund, there's a program for, for Africa. Africa businesses, Africa development. Uh, any person who is carrying a project in Africa is actually qualified for this. Um, last year, the vision is actually to grow small business and de to develop Africa, develop entrepreneurs community. And that's the mission and provide C capital and technical skill. Like I said, if you live in Africa, you qualify for this. This year alone, they spent $117 million directly in Africa. You don't need to pay ap application fee. You don't need anything you already qualified. So many people just don't know about it. They're not going to give you a fund if you're in America. They have they only give you a fund if you are really in Africa. So the website, uh, Coach Gibert Town will share the website. Um, I'll share a few, uh, 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 I'll see if I can share a few stories. This, uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you go on the side, you can you can follow some of the lab testimony. Most of these guys are in Nigeria. Um, Nigeria businessmen, uh, you know, there's no bribe on this. You fill out the application, you qualify, and they will send you the money for your project and even follow up with you. 
um, the application is actually uh, at the bottom of the of the website. Let me, if you are really on the website, set. Uh, One of the main thing they focus on is the job creation. If you have, a, you are doing anything where you're gonna be employed people, they encourage that very, very well. Um, so if it's not just something that's gonna focus on you, uh, they, you know, they, they really, really put a lot of money in it. Like I say, in, in Nigeria, principally in Nigeria, a lot of entrepreneurs have benefited from this. Okay, so the, the application is uh, is somewhere here on the website. Apply for funding, right there. We said today we wanna be very practical. That's why I wanna show you something you can jump on it and, uh, and benefit from it immediately. Okay. There are a few other websites. There are a few other sites also uh, that Coach Gibert Tran is going to share in a chat room where you can actually go there and apply to get the funding for your project. Now, Ali Global, we are working to launch a C capital because a lot of people with such a great product or great project approach us and i mean we can't just sit quiet and not do anything so we you know we launched a c capital project okay thank you coach give a so he shared some website there uh the site i promised yesterday just copy and paste so you can use it go on that set up the account you're not gonna pay anything it's free write your project submit it and if they choose you, if they ask you to send more documents, just send the document and you can have the money you need it for your project. Very, very, very important. And this is for Africa. It's for people in Africa. So we are launched a C capital, uh, um, C capital, capital firm where Ali Global is going to match uh, uh, the capital, you can get an investor or somebody that can sponsor you for $1,500 and Ali Global is gonna match $1,500 for the startup. So you have $1,500, we match $1,500. Now, how can you use the C capital that Ali Global, Global can provide for you? Now, you can use that to develop your business plan because most of this website, before somebody handed $250,000 over to you, they want to see a clear business plan. And I see some people don't even have the business plan. You can use that to register your business. So you can have a legal business. An idea enough alone is not enough. You can use it to protect your business because some of the business you must register and trademark so somebody don't steal your idea. So for those who will be interested on those C capital, uh, coach, uh, coach, I think Coach Gibertron is, uh, and in, in every nation, we are working on a paperwork for that to start work with some of the early global members who are in business. And, and our goal, we know maybe 3,000 is not gonna help you to start a business. I mean, but that can help you to structure and give you the basic foundation of the business. And you can take that to go leverage even a million dollar fund. At least that can give you the basic foundation that you need it. Uh, the goal is to help you get exactly what you need. I mean, even if a coach Ram have one billion dollar and I'm giving only one dollar to a billion people, I'm not gonna solve anybody's problem. 
and everybody will still be hungry at the end of the day. So this is going to be a teamwork, but we want to channel our effort to empower you to make things easy for you and to find connect you with the right source of fun. So we, we talk about the difference between the um, we talk about the difference between different type of investment that you must go after. Now, could somebody who's a, who's a business person here and you have a project and you are looking for funding on it, I can advise you for some of the methodology. Yes, Coach Majedo, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Coach. Uh, thank you, Master Coach uh, Rafael, and good uh, evening, everybody. Um, I want to talk, I, I'm going to talk about my project with um, Medicassure, but I will talk in French. Medicassure is, uh, Medicassure, en fait, c'est un projet que j'ai mis en place avec uh, quatre autres partenaires. Donc, nous sommes, des, nous sommes cinq cofondateurs. Et Medicassure, c'est une euh, intermédiation médicale qui permet aux personnes qui vivent principalement en, Af en diaspora de prendre en charge les, les membres de leur famille restés au, dans nos pays africains. On est parti d'un simple constat, c'est que les parents, parfois, ou les membres de nos familles, étant malades, sollicitent de l'aide, ou alors nous, en tant que membres de famille vivant à la diaspora, avons une obligation de prendre en charge nos, les membres de nos familles restés de l'autre côté quand ils sont malades. Cependant, nous avons constaté que les fonds mis à leur disposition pour se faire soigner sont la plupart de temps utilisés à d'autres fins que les fins pour lesquelles ces montants étaient destinés. Et donc, pour cela, nous avons mis en place euh, une intermédiation médicale qui permet de de, 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 de donner des soins de qualité et à des prix juste aux personnes restées dans le sud okay. et pris en charge par les personnes restées dans le nord. Oh, OK. Euh, pour gagner en temps, comme j'ai une idée de ton projet, est-ce que je résume pour donner l'approche? OK. So, her project, she's working on the project. Um, matter of fact, she has a group of medical doctors from the diaspora that are actually help people in a diaspora take care of their family back home in Africa and finance from the diaspora. You know, when you send money, if your grandma say, I'm sick, you send them $500, they will take the $500 to go do something else and not go into the hospital. <laughs> so the, the, the goal is to, to have a system where they can go and seek treatment with that pay. So th that's a concept. So a concept like that, uh, uh, Coach Majado, I will use a two approach. I will use a benevolent approach and I will use capitalism approach. First of all, just by hearing you, it's a great concept. There are people that I will, I will want you to write this concept and there's more institution like a hospital, they have a fund to help other hospital. And the way they do that, they don't give you money. But when it's time to change the new bed, the new machine, they will pack all that in a container and pay and ship it to you and claim that they donate X number of money in a third world country and do a tax wrap right off with it. Uh, I, I actually have a container of bed, hospital supply that I'm shipping to Congo to coach uh, Coach David Hospital. It's free to him because he just told me I need it. And I talked to somebody with the medical supply. They said, well, we give donate a container to a dead. So it, some people just want to help other people. So you want to use that approach, number one. And the second approach is could be what you guys are doing. So you can raise funds for that. 
I mean, this is something profitable. How do you raise funds for that? You have to approach people. This can be, in order for you to have a cheap result, you have to be able to go out down there and see doctor and say, hey, we want to buy 20 hours of your time every week and we prepare you per month. So they have that money ahead of time. And you just send your patient to that doctor. So you need enough money to prepare a few doctors every month and be able to send enough patient. That would be the best way to have a low rate. Because no, no patient is coming and prepare the, a doctor and then come to the hospital when they are sick. So I will go and see an investor and say, well, this is a concept that I have. This is a problem. The Jasper community, they have money, but the parent, they don't see the value of life. So people are losing their family because when they send money, they don't go to the hospital. They go and, you know, pay for tontin, jangi. They will go and give, put the money in the jangi <laughs> or buy clothes. They don't see the need to go pay for X-ray, $200,000, $200. So what we do, is that we make sure we follow these people with prepaid doctor, doctor that we, 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 we block certain number of time for them. I mean, some hospital, you can even buy their whole Monday. You say on Monday, your hospital is mine. On Monday, my patient come there on Monday and all our patient will go on Monday. Every doctor, we are taking Monday. Maybe it's not a busy day for much hospital and we give you a low rate, we prepay. Maybe, maybe in that investment, the angel investment, people will invest, you know, you can prepay the doctor, they can take 50% off because they are getting the money, uh, you know, ahead of time. Now the return, you can charge people up here with 50% margin and the investor get maybe 10, 15% of his money. It's a great concept. It just been, you've been creative. Very simple. You get people who will be donating for free. You know, they make it big. They need to help the people. We have, it, it meet human need. It meet human need. You appear to those, gather whatever you can gather and make easy. You can even go farther and let all these doctors know, hey, I will send a high tech machine to you. You use for three days for yourself and use for four days for me, and I pay for the machine. When you take the machine for free, you give it to them, they use for three days, you use for four days. That could be a great deal. I, I, I'm just coming with, with, with a way to negotiate. So to raise money for something like this, it's gonna be very easy. Who don't wanna invest in something like that? You always gonna find somebody that is sick, always. We have to go to the hospital. It's part of us. And then you raise the money, target enough client, and bingo, you're in business. Yeah, you're in business. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Master. Yeah. You, you're welcome. You're welcome. Would we'll also have another case. Uh, Coach Ejani, go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Coach Raphael, for giving me the floor. I have uh, 300 hectares uh, at home. Uh, the main problem is I don't have the tools. I don't have tractor. Uh, I don't have a, a lorry to carry a product in town. Uh, Last year, we were stuck at home because of COVID. We did uh, seven hectares of sweet potatoes. The car we hired to collect the potatoes to bring them in town, the car was broken and most of the sweet potatoes were rotten. The car, we, hi we hired a, a, a lorry 
it was broken. And sometimes you hire the tractor, government tractor, it will come there, it's not functioning, it's not well. And then you, instead of making 10 hectares, you will end up making maybe four hectares because the tractor is broken. All these things, all the money we were having, the money I got for my pension, all the money last year was finished. And now I'm really in problem. I don't know how I will continue with my, my farm. Okay. What nation are you in? I'm a Congolese. Are you from the farm is in Congo? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what we talked about yesterday. This is a great, great opportunity. I don't care if it's cassava, if it's potato, if it's corn, I will get an expert to come and tell me how much, what could be my production for you. And I will take the production. Like, okay, if you have plant 300 acres, how, what's gonna be the harvest? I take that harvest and go to the person that can buy. Most companies today are turning like cassava into uh, how do you call amidon in English? Ethanol? Into starch. Uh, starch. Ethanol? Starch? Starch. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So they will buy that. I will go and look for this kind of company and tell them, hey, I have 25 ton of amidon or starch that I can give it to you in 12 months. Would you buy? They say, yes. For how much I negotiate the price? I say, give me a purchase order that when I produce, you buy. They write you a purchase order. You take, go to another person. I have six ton or ten ton of stash that I'm gonna produce this year. Would you buy? They say yes, we will buy. For how much you negotiate a pre price? Take the purchase order now. If you balance. Your production is hundred thousand thousand dollars, and you have a purchase order of six hundred thousand dollars. Your profit march as I risk, I'm just saying anything, is five hundred. Let's say you net three fifty. Let's say things gonna go bad, you're gonna lose some money, hundred and fifty loss. You take that to Coach Sarat Saratu. And tell her, Auntie, this is a purchase order of 650000 If we put a C on the ground now, in four months, we will have it. And it's going to pay us 650. dollars It's going to cost us 100000 I need 10 people to give me 10000 10, And I will pay them 15000 at the end of the year. Or I double their money. I pay them 20%, 100%. So I give them 20,000. You pay 10,000, I give you 20,000. What's a guarantee? I will hire you as a guarantor for my harvest for this year. You don't lose money. If you lose your money, this is what you take from me. Because you have two, three buyers already that are looking for that product. You have almost six, almost a two thousand percent profit. I'm sure Coach Saratu is going to give you the ten thousand. You only need ten people, and then at the end of the year, you bring them twenty thousand dollars when you sell it. Next year, Coach Saratu will call you, Madam. How much do you need this year for the plantation? That's what I would do. develop a business plan, sell your production before you produce, and then raise the money to produce. Factor, talk to the tractor company, even how much it costs to purchase a tractor. Factor all those costs in and use that as an initial capital that you need it to produce whatever you need to produce. Sell actually what you're going to produce 
and go out, raise money to do it. It makes so clear. Even me, if you call me and tell me that, Coach Ryan, give me $10,000. I have a habit of $250,000. This is how you work. This is a purchase order. This is what the experts say I can produce and all that. I will have another expert check. If they say, yes, it's true. That's it. Wow. Simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm you're welcome. To do that. Thank you. Coach, uh, Coach Honorine, go ahead, please. Yes. Thank you very much. I will speak in French because uh, I don't really speak English very good. Uh, je, je suis fondatrice de d'une société, une ASBL, ici en Belgique, qui s'appelle Noble Retour. Et alors, dans la communauté, nous avons beaucoup eu euh, des décès et à chaque fois, on était appelé à faire des cotisations pour pouvoir rapatrier les corps de nos confrères au Cameroun, malgré euh, la pléthore de, de, des assurances hein, obsèques qui, qui existent. Alors, je ne comprenais pas pourquoi est-ce que nos frères n'arrivaient pas à souscrire à, à une assurance. Alors, j'ai fait une étude de marché, j'ai fait une enquête et je me suis rendu compte que le véritable problème, c'était euh, déjà un dans la mentalité chez nous. Nous ne, nous ne sommes pas prévoyants. Donc, euh, on, les, les, de ce qui sortait des résultats, on ne trouvait pas d'importance de mettre de côté de l'argent pour euh, prévoir nos obsèques. Donc, c'était un sujet tabou. Pour d'autres, les compagnies d'assurance étaient chères et donc, euh, ils préféraient euh, rester comme ça. Alors, j'ai pris la décision avec euh, quatre autres euh, cofondateurs de mettre sur pied une SBL. Une SBL parce qu'il y avait déjà ce problème financier. Et je me suis dit, si je me mets en assurance en société normale, ben, j'aurai les, les mêmes prix que les, les assurances normales parce que c'est un métier réglementé. Alors, je me suis mis en ASBL et je n'ai pas plus d'expérience que ça au niveau des finances, des business plans et tout. Mais vu que l'ASBL n'a pas de backup financier, les banques m'ont dit que je ne pouvais pas avoir de garantie, qu'ils ne font pas de, de garantie pour les ASBL. Alors, du coup, le, plus, le grand risque que j'ai avec mon ASBL, c'est d'avoir beaucoup de décès et de ne pas pouvoir assurer le rapatriement. Donc, mon business plan, il est très simple. Les inscriptions, c'est 26 euros par personne et c'est unique. Et alors, il y a des cotisations annuelles que l'on paye qui coûtent 50 euros et qui sont aussi individuelles. C'est-à-dire que si nous avons une famille de cinq personnes, chaque membre de la famille, même les personnes mineures, vont payer 50 euros parce que ben, le temps pour l'association... De, de se faire un fonds, un fonds de garantie. Mais là, j'ai du mal à convaincre, malgré le fait que ce n'est que 50 euros par an, j'ai les confrères qui trouvent encore que c'est cher. Je n'arrive pas, en fait, à avoir des adhésions. Et ma crainte aujourd'hui, parce que quand on s'inscrit à la SBL, on a une période de carence de un an. Et cette période de carence de un an, pour moi, dans mon cas, va arriver à expiration euh, en février-mars 2022. Et donc, moi, ma peur aujourd'hui, en voyant le nombre de membres d'adhérents que j'ai aujourd'hui, si j'ai un décès demain, euh, l'année prochaine, ce sera difficile pour moi d'assurer le rapatriement. Et mon problème est à ce niveau-là, comment ce risque-là, comment le minimiser Deuxièmement, comment convaincre euh, la diaspora, comment, comment convaincre les Africains de s'inscrire à ce projet Parce qu'à la base, c'est un projet communautaire qui, pour fonctionner, a besoin de beaucoup de personnes. Voilà, en gros. Oh, OK, wow, awesome. Who can translate very quick? Stéphanie, could you translate very quick and fast? Don't OK, like yes, coach. OK, good evening, everyone. Uh, here is the project that has been shared to us today by Honorine all the way from Belgium. She says that she has a project wherein uh, they had this, the problem is that uh, many people were dying, and Africans were dying, and it was difficult to repatriate the cops back home. So she created an NGO with other people wherein they like have an association OK, 
Okay, I, I think Coach Stephanie have a little problem. Okay, let me see if I can summarize. Pretty much, uh, she owned the association, um, and she will, she. If the cops then, if she. Yeah, and how to be able to call it? Hello? Mentally. I can have you there, Coach Stephanie. Your network is so bad. Hello. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay, Coach Stephanie. Let me summarize. Okay. She owned a network um, in Belgium. When okay. if you pass in Belgium, they will send your men back home. So the, the, the goal is to have so many people mm -hmm. get the affiliation or membership so she can keep doing that. And it looks like she don't have a number. And if it, she doesn't meet a quota, she may lose uh, the, her status. Now, I want to ask a few questions. Can, uh, what are the minimum requirement member that you need? Same song. 500. How many do you have now? Now I have like 30, 30. 30 member. Is it only people in Belgium? No, in Europe. Oh, the, the whole Europe? Yes. And all, all Africans. Canadian? No, all Africans. All African? Where, where are you advertising? You only advertise to your friend? <laughs> There's so many Africans in the diaspora. Okay. So it is called, it's because due to COVID situation, I didn't have the, my, I don't know, no, la strategy marketing que j'avais a été vraiment, um, Okay. Comment dire? Entravé par euh, le COVID. Okay. On ne pouvait, je ne pouvais, je pouvais pas faire du porte en porte ou alors rencontrer parce que j'avais prévu rencontrer des associations aussi. Okay. Essayer d'avoir une convention avec des associations, mais avec la situation de COVID, on ne peut pas se rencontrer quand je, avec les responsables quand je propose de faire des zooms. Ils ne sont pas disponibles, donc c'est très difficile de convaincre des gens. Actuellement, j'ai juste pris un community management. Qui, euh, avec qui on travaille sur nos différentes pages YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn et Instagram. Okay. Au moins pour se faire connaître déjà. Uh, so one of the things I would recommend is that you, your product is very good. Uh, however, people don't like to get up and start go talk about that. It scares people. It's not the topic people like to talk about it. So you have to come up with something that will make people excited. Um, and then this has to be like a second product that when you have a first product, it gives you also the second product. Um, I will recommend things like, um, I know to travel in, in Africa, people, there's a small insurance that is called, called travel insurance. I will look into something like that and purge that with my product and put a travel insurance on front. Like, hey, while you are traveling back home, if something happened to you, at least, you know, you lose your ticket. Airline company, uh, there's a company called Triple A that actually wholesale that insurance. So you can register people on the Triple A and while they purchase that, you make them purchase yours too. And that can be a second part. That's the number one. The goal here is to looking for something that can get people in. People don't like to deal with debt. It's, it doesn't feel good when you think about it. It hurt. It makes you depressed. You know, it's not something you wake up in the morning and be like, man, let me go pay. If I die, somebody's going to ship me back home. You don't even want to think about it. So look for something good first and push that and let this be what we call a rollover or extra or upsell or upsize of it. I would do that first. Um, another thing you can also do is to find something that is gonna benefit people now on the ground, now. Um, I don't know. You can look for affiliation with supermarket. Affiliation, something that you can give pass that affiliation to people and say, hey, 
get this affiliation for a year free if you purchase this insurance. So if the affiliation is $50, you give them the affiliation for free. So you, you have that company, you negotiate with affiliation for some kind of discount. There's so many affiliation out there that can give to your client a free year subscription. You negotiate that ahead. Let people pay you for the insurance and get free affiliation. If they don't need it, your insurance fund. People will feel like they're not paying for your insurance. They, feel, they will feel like they are buying the affiliation. But you sell your insurance and have a member. So there's so many things you can, you have to, you have to be creative about what you can give to these people. Yeah, you have to think about what you can give. Um, another thing, a lot of people send money back home. Because remember, your niche market is diaspora, people in the diaspora. Find a way, people that are sending money back home, you know, some kind of way for them to save. Why, if they don't have your, your affiliation, uh, you can do something like that. Make them have your membership in order to have that kind of discount. Um, I, I see a lot of people do that. You, you just have to be creative. But to sell it, that is not that easy. Um, I was a pre I'm a president of Cameroonian people in, a, in Atlanta, Georgia for years. I tried to, so we, we, we call that Saji here. So nobody buy. I understand exactly what you say. We even make association pay for that to people for free. And we was taking money in a savings account to pay for it. So people don't pay us out of the, the pocket. So you can approach some of the association and offer them that way. Let the association back pay for because if somebody died, they will have to come up with the money. First, if they have that, you have to come up with the money. Um, so it, it's just something that it's not just easy, so easy to, you know, to, to solve. Another approach also is to get close to embassy and see if you can talk with them. Different African embassy, see if they can come up with a budget for that. Small budget, send them, send them a small budget uh, 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 liability insurance. If it's something happened, instead of, they do it, you know, because most embassy, if they identify that you are from that country and nobody can do something and they bear the person, they will send the bill to the country. So you can use that approach also. Thank you. Uh, and, and Thank you very much. Thank you, you were talk, talking about strategy of marketing. We have Coach Mani. I don't know if he's, he's in a hall. If you can share your number. He's an expert in, in marketing. He can, you know, he can really, really rock you with that. Uh, get in contact with him. Uh, you know, he can develop a great strategy for you. And I'm sure, I mean, you can get a million people. There's so many people in the diaspora. Very, very quick. Uh, he's really good. Thank you. I will do that. that. Okay, thanks. Okay, who was next? I am. I am OG. Uh, okay, let, let me take uh, Coach, uh, Coach <laughs> Amen. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, everyone. I think uh, Coach is hearing me there. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm so I'm so pleased. I'm so grateful for this uh, very moment I'm sharing with you. You have been impacting me uh, since two months now. I joined iLead, and uh, this is a new experience for me as a spiritual man. Although I heard the word, I heard a voice go and industrialize Africa. But being a spiritual man, I was so much based on the spiritual side, and uh, I don't know anything about uh, entrepreneurship. I don't know how to handle everything. And, uh, and all the experiences I have, 
early the year when I started, I just say no. Until last year, last year when I entered into a close room with the Lord, that was where he spoke to me and said, now I open the door for you. Go before the nations. I'm going to give you uh, lands everywhere. So the first land I received here, I received more than 5,000 acres where I am right now. But the land is very far away from the city. We bought the tractors. We bought everything. But it was so difficult for me to make it on the uh, World Bank. Since I have a complete document, World Bank came to help and financed me with some 17. We are doing. Now that uh, I have uh, lands everywhere uh, in Africa, more than 15 nations, I'm having land everywhere. So I don't, I don't know how to come about it. So I need, I need your ideas. How do I come about it to make a business plan? How do I approach these people so that we know how to figure out uh, 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 this vision the Lord has given me? Thank you. Yeah, great, uh, great, great question. Um, I think, man of God, you have land in so many countries. What yes. I am you, I will take one country and develop it and use that as a, as a specimen to go to other countries. With what you have, more investor or more bank, I mean, can literally run after you. But sometimes they want to see what you have done in the past. So even if it's a small project, do it and see the result and, and use a little bit the, the approach of our sister that I talked to early. Um, and, and then just the, the, the rest is gonna just follow. So start somewhere because like I said, if you're trying to take everything, I mean, you have so many land in so many nations. I'm talking about thousands of acres. If you start all, to, all, all of them, it's gonna swallow you. Start somewhere and just add on as you as you move on that would be the that's that would be my best recommendation thank you okay 47 66 80 yes sir i the line the line cut off. I didn't get any answer. What I didn't get the answer, please. Oh, okay. Let, yes, let me start over again. No, what I'm saying is that start from you have so many lines. Focus in one nation. Take one nation and develop the work okay. there. And take that one as a okay. statement. When you go to other nations, you can show your work. Even the bank will give you money. Anybody will give you money. Focus on one area okay, first. Okay. And develop that one, get the result, and then the rest is going to be his fault. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. You Thank welcome. you so much. All right. 476680. Go ahead. Oh, do you have a hands on? 47 66 80. Est-ce que tu peux poser ta question, s'il te plaît? C'est à mon tour, bien. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, la communauté. Bonjour. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir donné la parole. C'est vraiment une opportunité et puis c'est aussi une bonne initiative. Moi, je suis francophone, c'est pourquoi je m'exprime en français. Oui, oui. Concernant le but de la formation, c'est vraiment une bonne chose pour la communauté africaine, vu aussi l'état que notre continent traverse et puis vu aussi la crise, ça joue très, ça joue très beaucoup sur le pays, sur le continent, sur toutes les activités entières. Bon, la, la question que j'ai à poser, c'est de savoir, parmi le milieu jeune, les Africains, on a des projets, on a des initiatives à mettre en place. Est-ce que vous me saisissez? Très bien, très bien. Oui, oui, on a des initiatives, on a des projets à mettre en place, mais le problème, c'est le financement. On n'a pas un financement adéquat pour mettre en place ces investissements. 
Et du coup, ça joue sur la jeunesse africaine. La plupart se sont obligés de se lancer dans des activités qui ne sont pas loyales en tout cas. Donc, euh, c'est un peu ça. Si vous pouvez rentrer dans des détails pour clarifier cela, pour une meilleure compréhension. Parce que les jeunes ont des idées, ont des initiatives, ont, ont fini leur formation, ont fini les études, mais il n'y a pas de boulot. Le taux de chômage gangrène sur le continent africain, il n'y a pas de boulot, il n'y a pas des activités génératrices de revenus. Il y a la crise sociopolitique, il y a la crise sanitaire, tout ça là, ça fait que les jeunes ne s'en sortent pas. Et puis, ils sont obligés de se lancer dans des activités qui ne sont pas vraiment adéquates pour leur vie. D'autres se sont lancés dans la migration un peu partout. Donc, euh, si vous pouvez vous nous expliquer, c'est un peu plus pour que ça nous permette de comprendre ça. Pour moi, je suis francophone, j'ai compris ce mois un peu, un peu vos réactions. C'est pourquoi je participe à ça. Moi, je suis centrafricaine. Vraiment, c'est une bonne occasion, c'est un privilège pour nous de participer à ça. Ça va beaucoup nous aider, ça va beaucoup ouvrir nos esprits, ça va clarifier beaucoup de choses. Vraiment, merci beaucoup. Si vous pouvez Mais... rentrer dans des détails, ça va plus nous aider. Merci beaucoup, coach. Merci. Comment tu t'appelles Allô, vous me recevez? Très bien. Oui, moi c'est Anista Wata. Agista Wata. Oui. oui. Ok. Merci Agista. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, her question is actually today there's a lot of youth, uh, African youth that I actually do things that, um, you know, uh, how, how, how could I say? Because, I mean, There's a lot of people. I don't understand, please. Please, I don't understand English. I speak French. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's okay. The rest is So ah, okay. there's a lot of youth that um, don't have job. And since the economy situation in Africa, they are, you know, called to do anything that maybe just, you know, it's not fit, maybe not, it's not legal. So how could, how could, We address this youth. Uh, my question, my answer would be, you, you know, there's no situation that is too bad. We say things are bad because we don't know, we don't have a solution based on the current problem. Um, when you look at America in the year of Great Depression, I don't think Africa is worse than in the year of Great Depression. So we can always be creative um, and it's always tough. I believe that's why we are doing everything we are doing like this to really, really help people to really, really come together and see how we can team up and share experience and, and learn how to do things, you know, in a different way. It's not just Africa, it's tough everywhere. The world is changing and we have to use a new method to address the problem today. So um, the, the, the youth must, update themselves. Sometimes you turn up your computer and the, the computer will tell you not to set it up because the app to update, uh, things are not the same way. The border has been lifted. The, there's a mondialization today. The guy that is working on my landing page, he's been working on our landing page for some time. He's in Nigeria. I never met him. The guy who designed the whole website for ID Global is in Nigeria. Most of our technicians, I'm not even in America. What does that mean? That means from wherever you are, you can do great. You don't have to be in America physically. You don't have to be in Europe physically, but you have to upgrade your skill to become marketable. You have to bring value into the world. And if you do it, I mean, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You can be local and function in an international way. And that's why we are here trying to solve a problem on the global level. You don't have to see yourself like a village boy or city boy or Lagos boy. No, go all the way into the world. If you're an engineer, why don't you serve the world? Why do you have to limit yourself in only Lagos? That's why you have an internet. Internet opened the door. When I go online looking for IT guy, I see so many IT in Nigeria. 
In America, they want to take 10,000 to do something. Somebody in Nigeria say, give me seven or eight. I'll give it to the guy in Nigeria. Save 2,000. So you have to compete global. We have to go global. So that's my answer for, for that, my friend. J'espère que tu m'as compris, Anissa. Tu m'as un peu compris. Oui, j'ai compris un peu, un peu. J'ai compris ce mot un peu, un peu, mais pas le contexte en tout en général. J'ai pas compris le tout. Comme c'est un anglais là, je fais de mon mieux pour comprendre un peu. Coach Raphaël va prendre le temps à la fin pour bien expliquer ce que j'ai dit. Le traducteur Coach Raphaël fait un coup. S'il te plaît. Ah, ok. Vraiment, okay. merci beaucoup. Coach OJ, sorry, go ahead. When you have two languages in the room, you have to bounce, bounce back, bounce back. Thank <laughs> God for Nigeria being bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Coach Raphael. Um, I'm passionate about growing young leaders. I run an initiative now where I take children through leadership and values. Because for me here in Nigeria, I've noticed that the young ones are really because of globalization, like you have mentioned, are holding on to very bad vices. A lot of them don't have belief in the system or even themselves. And so I'm quite passionate about running a youth center where I can encourage these children to believe in themselves and to mold them into better citizens, even from the younger age. Now, I get a bit confused because um, I need funds to run a center like that. But if you look at it, I need to sustain myself in terms of having money to meet my own needs. But for me, I'm just passionate about seeing these young ones become better citizens than what they are now. I come across a lot of people that are losing hope, getting into drugs. They don't believe there's, there's a, a chance for them. And I want to inspire them to believe that tomorrow will be better. So running a youth center, um, I'm really at loss at what to do, how to go about it. The initiative I have, I used to have physical sessions with the children. I work with children age six to 14, and then I have the young adults group that are 15 to 25. At that, and even the young ones at six, we have this thing I called kidspreneurship where I was teaching them how to learn a skill, how to open a, a savings account. I had some banks coming after me to see if I can get the children to open their accounts there so that they can learn to start saving. I mean, I as an adult didn't know about buying shares when I was a younger person. I thought it was something adults did. But I've realized now that parents are buying shares in the name of their children. And by the time their children are adults, they actually have some substantial money to go into one business or another. So in a nutshell, we were doing the kidspreneurship, teaching them um, skills, teaching them um, business ideas. I had a young boy of eight who wanted to make lemonade and I had to encourage the father to help him register the company and help him make the lemonade so he can sell in school to his classmates and start making money because the boy was very passionate about that lemonade stand. And we have kids like that all over, but there's nobody to guide or push them. So that's something I am quite passionate about. But when you want to fund that kind of thing in Nigeria, it's not easy to come by. So that's the dilemma that I have. Yeah, uh, Coach OJ, that's a, great, I, that's a great project. The only problem you will encounter will be the competition between the government and you. 
you see the government the government ain't sit you when you give birth to your baby the government want to take them and school them so they can serve the government they can serve the country and what you are doing you are teaching them to become independent <laughs> you want to give them independence and, and that the government want them to go to the system so they can be like everybody else mm. and you want to teach them independence that's why they cannot they don't have fun for that now if you go and target the kids that actually they're there from school that are on the street that are doing drugs yes maybe they can give you fun for that because they lost those already and they want somebody to bring them back um the the school system is is the we call the institution is every government every nation that sunday stays strong if you if you not stand the school system the government is going to collapse also that's why you see country when people don't go to school there's a war there because the the institution there's no institution there mm. it's an institution that make us behave the way we behave yeah. make us afraid make us follow the law make us just do what they ask us to do and not get out of it uh but you can have uh, some people who love to develop kids that can you know be a donor for something like that you know mother teresa was able to raise more, a lot million millions of billions of dollars to to impact life all over the world uh, mm -hmm. so and any human being wants to be part of something great particularly when it comes to other human beings so i would say to see write down the concept what you want to see happen and then hey let's make it happen let's make it happen we'll just talk to enough people if you talk to thousand people i trust me 20 people will say i'm in with you i'm talking about 20 people who reach out in the pocket and say that's what i bring on let's make it happen good thank you yeah. all right thank you okay guys thank you so much hey you guys are awesome you guys are awesome like i say all the 20 page is going to be on your notes step by step blueprint where to go look for money where to apply the website the application just go ahead and do it go ahead and do it let's by this time next year have people who come back and say hey i was able to get 250,000 here i was able to have my project funding here i was able to have my project funding there and for those that needs to put their business thing together. We have a lot of experts around us. Reach out to some of them. Reach out to your country rep. They will connect you with the expert. Uh, and they will be able to help you establish, give you a proper business plan. In the school of 365, we have a lot of information on with how to do it. I mean, anybody in the school of 365 is supposed to pitch about money and all that, you know. Uh, and then we just add more information. I think tomorrow, I don't know where we're going tomorrow, but the journey is continuing tomorrow. We have this app 15 days uh, to press on. Um, just continue to follow us. Um, and then just let's, let's learn together and, and come out of this very, very strong. Again, thank you so much, all my wonderful, wonderful,